name is Ming Lang Chen. Uh, I'm a Taiwanese uh, filmmaker living in New York. Uh, I'm mainly a writer, director. Um, I went to NYU graduate film. Uh, it took me a long time to be able to uh, make my first movie. Uh, and uh, I have met, I have uh, made two feature films so far. Uh, before I make my first feature film in New York and my second film in Taiwan. So before I went to, I took part in a, a portugal chic, uh, I already made my first feature film. And I was in the process of uh, trying to, uh, uh, I was in the process of uh, developing my second feature film. And it was uh, a good time, a, a very good timing. Um, I've got this chance to, to take part in this, uh, this workshop. And were you, at that time, were you already based in New York then? Uh, yes, I've, uh, I came to study in NYU and I, uh, and I stayed here in New York. So it was a long time because I, I have been trying to uh, find funding for my first uh, movie uh, in the States, but it was, it was really hard at the time when there's uh, no, basically no investment or there's no uh, prospect of the possibility to make a Taiwan, uh, Asian oriented a movie here in the States. Not like now, you know, now we see there's a crazy rich Asian, there's this kind of, kind of possibility at my time when I want, uh, was started out, it was really hard. So it took me a long time. And then eventually I, uh, I got funding from Taiwan uh, government. So I could, uh, I was able to make the movie here in New York. I'm assuming that if you moved to New York, you know, when you did your training and then decided to stay, it was because maybe that's probably a bad assumption. I'm thinking that it was because you thought that you'd have more opportunity to work and live as a filmmaker because perhaps you couldn't in Taiwan, but maybe that's not right. Maybe it was for completely different reasons. Uh, yeah, it was, you know, at the time uh, in Taiwan, uh, I, I would say my generation, it was rather hard to be able to uh, uh, make an indie film because the, the, all the financial help is not as much as what they have right now. So at the time I thought it would be easier for me to, to there were more possibilities here in the States. Uh, but then, you know, everybody has their, uh, I would say their des destiny or the way how they make their movies. So everybody has their different different way, different routes. And it just turned out for me, it was really hard to be able to find enough funding for my first movie. That was all. I understand. It sounds like you actually fit um, between two cultures in a way, you know, so in Taiwan, you couldn't find necessarily the money to support the independent film you wanted to make. And then in New York, you found it difficult to, to find the money to support the Taiwanese aspect of what it was you were making. And yes, kind of like trapped in between. But that was, what was funny was it's actually my what my first uh, feature film was about. It was about between the cultural uh, gap. Yes, so uh, that was rather interesting. Uh, but right now, I would have to say, you know, uh, in Taiwan, because uh, for the last decades, uh, there was a lot of commercial movie that had very great uh, box office success. So uh, uh, it has been there there has been more financial aid or fi financial investment in Taiwan to be able to make more of, uh, I would say commercial film rather than 
you know, our house firm. But then the, there's more money floating around and it, it's much easier for younger uh, filmmakers to try to get uh, enough, enough funding to make their feature film. Okay, so how was it that you came to hear about Produire au Sud in the first place? Okay, uh, that was um, a friend of mine actually was working at Taipei Film Festival at the time. So uh, that was after I have uh, released my first feature film. Uh, and then uh, I was trying to start development for my second feature film. And this friend told me about it. He said, well, there, there's this workshop, maybe you want to try it. And I saw uh, the description and I was really interested. I thought it was very interesting because uh, uh, what it picked my interest in was is the classes that teach you how to pitch. And I often have difficulties trying to uh, sum up my idea, my stories and uh, pitching my projects to people. Uh, I think for filmmaker, for artists, there's always this, uh, you know, it was, it was just like, it's horrible. I, my idea is so good, so much. How can you ask me to concentrate, just concentrate it on only one sentence, you know, or for me, I, you know, it was really difficult for me. So I was really interested in the aspect of that. And I thought if I could learn that, that would be a really, really uh, a great opportunity uh, and a really uh, good, good thing for me. I understand. And so you applied, then you went in? Uh, I went um, in 2016 yes. in Taipei. And my second feature film uh, is called The Teacher. You, you went with your producer, I presume? Yes, uh, I went with, uh, uh, I, have, I have two producers. So one of them is less busy. So <laughs> they could, the other one is, uh, he's himself a, a distributor. So he has like, his schedule is impossible for the, I remember it was five days of uh, courses and it was really intense. So uh, only one um, producer, I thought, you know, I, I, he was good enough you know, to try to move his schedule around to go with me. Yes, I was, I was really, uh, I, I really appreciate that. And did you have to, um, you know, in applying, did you have to change anything about your script or did you just take it as is and then do make uh, changes while you were there? I think when I applied for it, I already had uh, the whole structure. I mean, the, the storyline of, uh, of the script, but I didn't, I haven't finished my script yet. Uh, which I thought, you know, from the hindsight, I thought it was not as ideal um, because I didn't get to learn enough about the revision of the script. Uh, that was one thing I, I thought, I, you know, I could have uh, gotten better in that aspect. Uh, but I spent years and years uh, writing proposals uh, to get my first movie off the ground. So when he came to my second movie, I was already quite skilled at uh, how to write a nice, a good proposal. But the one thing I remember quite clearly is that uh, during the classes at uh, Podio Xu, I get to learn more about how to write it even more precisely and professionally. Uh, because I get to know the point of view from the other side. You know, the, which is to say from the point of view of people who are reading the pro proposals, uh, how they often look for, which is I never know about. You know, I've been writing and writing and I knew that it's getting better, but I never get to know uh, the point of view from the other side, which was so helpful for me. Can you 
elaborate on that? What was the what was that point of view that was missing? Can you give an example? Uh, it's so long ago now. I I don't know if I can have a precise example. But for example, I'm writing like story uh uh storylines or um, writing a, a summary. I could before I would be just like what I thought about this story how how do i concentrate it and some uh, summon it up summon it up uh but then after i know you know i went to put your shoot i kind of understand uh how uh they look at the summary and what they are looking for how they want the story to be organized for them to pick up very quickly what's there and what they want from, how would I say, you know, what is the part that shines in your project and how you bring it out. When people look at it, they see it right away. So that sounds actually like a, a really positive thing. And I'm, I'm wondering, whether there is not also a downside to that in the sense that one may change one's story in order to communicate with what one perceives the market wants. Is there any of that or, did it, or, or was it really more about just um, making that which is strong shine brighter? Help me understand um, whether- Well, I think uh, for, for the proposals, you know, it is, it is how you get your funding. So uh, it doesn't matter how you're gonna make your movie, you need to get the funding first. So uh, think about when people accepting proposal, they have 30, 50 proposals in front of them. How do you let your, let your project stand out in the last 10 or you know, even last five? And then you have opportunities to see them, talk to them. But before that, you need to get in that uh, little, you know, 5% of it. Yes. So I think there's no downside of it. It is just, you know, you need to be able to excel on that. Yes, I understand. And, and so tell me a little bit about how about the trajectory of the film, the teacher. So from at Produire Sud stage, you said that it um, was a proposal and you wished you had a script. Presumably afterwards you wrote the script, um, you know, and what, and then how did the project go on to be completed? Okay. Uh, so I went to Produire Sud at uh, 2016. Uh, I think two, at 2000, 17, uh, I got into Golden Horse uh, project development. Uh, uh, so that was another push that helped me to uh, be more, more uh, clear about this project. And then in 2018, uh, I got my, um, my funding. So let's right. go from, you got your funding in 2018 and you were able to go into production? Yes. So uh, also, you know, during a production, I was trying to figure out if uh, uh, there's a possibility to be an international production. And my, my producer and I, we actually look into uh, applying uh, some international funding. Uh, but I think it came out it's more complicated uh, than what my producer will commit to do. Uh, and then we think the other way, trying to see if we would be able to get enough funding just from Taiwan. Uh, and you know, eventually we thought this way would be easier, less complicated, and we would already have enough money to do it. So, which was the uh, was why we we just uh, concentrate in Taiwan uh, from the government, and uh, you know we found enough 
an, enough money to do the movie. So uh, we started um, shooting uh, by the end of, I think it's September of uh, 2018. Uh, and the movie was finished uh, and was released in the end of uh, 2018. Uh, we, we were in Golden Horse Film Festival. Uh, it was, we won the best, uh, uh, best supporting actress, uh, nominated the best uh, best uh, new actor, which is the the main role, the main character. Um. So yes, uh, by the twenty twenty, the pandemic started, which was when you know we were about to go international. So uh, all the film festival was online. We got into LA, Seattle, San Francisco, London, uh, all of them went online. So, um, you know, um, I, I, I do miss to be able to, uh, to be in person, to uh, talk to the audience, you know, after the screening, that was really nice that uh, I couldn't get it in the online film festival. But uh, some festival gave me feedback that uh, on the online uh, screening, they, they were able to reach more audience, wider audience. So I guess there's like um, pros and cons, yeah. you know. I guess for you, some of the networking opportunity as well was um, less like after your screening, it would have been nice for you to be able to talk with sales agents, distributors, producers make links for your next film right right that's you know the networking part it's also uh you know i miss that yes is that something that was um that you experienced at produire au sud the networking for sure you know the 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 part to be go uh, to be able to take part in produire au sud is that uh, you get to networking uh to meet people uh, for example, I wasn't because I live in New York, so I'm not that uh, connected in Taiwan uh, filmmaking uh, circle. And when I took the, this workshop, I get to know a lot of, especially people who were in the same workshop. Uh, you go through the classes, intense class so much. So there's this kind of uh, uh, camaraderie that's between between all the participants, that was really nice. And actually, I found uh, two person from the same year. They they help produce my film as well. Wow. Yes. What do you mean that they were not on board your project at the time you came in? But they, they, they have their own project. <laughs> Yes, so I, I asked them, I said, well, we were, to, you know, we were in that workshop together and you heard it so much. I was, you know, pitching it, talking about it. And I said, would you help me to make the movie? And they agreed. So they were on board as kind of producer, line producer part. That's a wonderful story. That's wonderful, yes. Yeah, that's really concrete evidence of the type of bond and professional network that develops within the workshop. That's great. <laughs> <laughs> um, so what aspect of Produire au Sud did you find the most helpful? You've, at this stage, you've described learning um, the pitching, um, you uh, learning how to present your proposals in such a way as they shine and the networking, is there anything else uh, about it or? Uh, I think um, the part about script writing, you know, I, I mentioned that I missed because when I got there, I have only a rough, uh, probably like 20 pages of script. Uh, but people who has the full script, they get to get more feedbacks from the teacher and they, I think they also get to do a lot more revision uh, than I could have too. 
So uh, that was uh, that was the part. But after I mentioned that, you know, after my year, uh, they have changed uh, the the structure of the course. So after the end of uh, the workshop, uh, right now I think they have two or three times uh, meeting again. Each time to read the re revision and then to discuss and uh, to revise it, and I think that's amazing. That's just uh, you know uh, priceless to be able to meet with the teacher again and again. Each time after your revision, people could get you feedbacks, and which is what we need because when you write your script, you never know if it's a good revision or not, if you hit the mark. And with someone to be like looking, you know, beside your own point of view, to give you that feedback, that's really helpful. I hear you. I think it's some, um, from what I've heard from other directors, that, that writing phase is a very isolating process too. And so, you know, having someone actually engage with your work, just that feels like, oh, it's alive. <laughs> right, right. That's, you know, our writing process is very lonely. And also sometimes you you feel like you're you're blinded by a blindfold. And you don't know if you're going this way, if that's right, if it's... So it takes a lot of, if someone uh, could help you or you know to find someone who would participate in that process with you that's a very uh, valuable thing mm. yes um, you know given that your film was set in uh, your Thai culture but the, the workshop Taiwan was, culture Taiwan culture sorry because otherwise Thai is like Thailand Thailand um, yeah <laughs> um, Taiwan culture but that the script and the proposal and the workshop was held in which language English English yes so it was uh, for me it's not because I live in New York for such a long time so uh, I have been you know for my first movie I've been writing everything in English. So uh, when I started writing my second feature film, I started writing it in English, uh, my script. Uh, so uh, uh, there wasn't so much of a, a problem for me, but I do have to say I, you know, for Taiwan, uh, Taiwanese, uh, especially a lot, a lot of people, uh, filmmakers uh, in Taiwan, they didn't have as much as, uh, uh, English skill as I do. So it was, um, I would have to say, I really respect them, you know, to have enough uh, bravery, to have enough uh, uh, to try to get into Poduoshi because, you know, you have to rewrite everything, your proposal, your script in English, and then you have to uh, take classes in English from nine o'clock in the morning to 5 p.m. It's the whole day long. I didn't, I, I don't know how they make, you know, made it. Uh, and that was, that requires really a lot, a lot from them. And I think, you know, I really, I really respect that. Yeah, so do I. <laughs> <laughs> but also though, you know, for you, the language of dialogue in your film was? It's Mandarin. Mandarin. Yes. And so how did you write your script in English when the dialogue was in Mandarin? Uh, well, I did a lot of, um, I, you know, the way I, because I live between culture, so I don't translate. I write two things. In English, I write the way they would speak in English and how they want to express themselves. And then when I uh, translate it to Chinese, I totally rewrite it, you know, a uh, different way of speaking, but they are expressing the same thing. Uh, so, uh, which is also, you know, the, the, the problem because 
I live in this cultural gap. So I do understand always that you cannot translate anything. You can only translate what you want to express. And then you have to totally rewrite in another language and in another way of expression. Uh, so my, my script between English and Chinese, uh, the dialogue is totally different. But uh, one way uh, I could make sure is that they are saying the same thing. Does that mean you basically had two scripts running? Um, no, uh, I think uh, after I started to get funding, I put the English aside because I never, I didn't need to use it. So I was refining my uh, Chinese uh, script. Um, but there was one thing I, I need, you know, I could mention is that uh, we have one meeting with uh, afterward the workshop with uh, uh, the te uh, script writing teacher, and I sort of expressed that I didn't. I thought my script wasn't ideal, uh, and I didn't know where to go about. I didn't know uh, how to fix that, uh, and um, eventually I. What I did was I started working with uh, the actors and then I just took out the structure of the script and throw everything away. And we, uh, we work on set. So my script, you know, the dialogue and everything, uh, we have the structure, but the actors, they, they didn't have the script. And so your script became a document that you used to develop your ideas and develop structure and get funding. And right. then the film was another thing. A new it's thing. not totally another thing, but it's sort of based on the script. It's just I didn't, uh, I didn't want the actors to totally follow the script, what is going, what is writing and to memorize the dialogues, et cetera. Yes, I understand. Makes for a stronger performance. What were the other challenging aspects of the workshop or difficult or that took you out of your comfort zone? Uh, well, I think, I think it's the pitching thing. Uh, the whole class, it's, uh, the whole course is very intense. Uh, I remember it was very tiring. Uh, sometimes we had class until 7 p.m., 8 p.m., and then you went for dinner and then you go home, you just, you know, you couldn't do anything. You go to sleep next day again. So it was rather quite intense. Uh, the pitching part, that's, that's really hard. Um, I remember in the first class, uh, the teacher just tell us, just go about, doesn't matter, you know, take as long as you need. It took me 15 minutes. I haven't started like even half of the script. So, you know, it was, it was really a horrible, <laughs> I remember it to be like yelling, yelling. And I was like, oh my God. <laughs> I couldn't stop myself. So, uh, but then after that, uh, you know, with the class, I can't believe that uh, I could do it. And then you learn this skill and, you know, uh, at the final of the presentation, I could really do it, you know, uh, on the point. And that was really uh, uh, even fascinating for myself, you know. Uh, and I, I'm glad. I, 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 I can't say that I won't be nervous again when I do the pitching, but now I know how to do it, you know, correctly, nicely. Yes. I think it also it illustrates very nicely what you were saying before about, you know, there's the project, but you have to make it shine for the person who's going to fund it because you could have a very, very beautiful script, but if you pitch it miserably, it'll never be read. 
Your you script. won't get any chance. Yeah, you won't even get into the door. How could you get money? So yeah, that's that's how you know I find that Podio Shu help so much on this aspect. And um, had you done other um, similar workshops prior to Produire au Sud? Uh, yes, I did. Um, it was in uh, 2009 when I started my first feature film uh, script writing and I took part in uh, Macedonia. There's a uh, Malaki Brothers uh, Film Festival script workshop. Um, that was my first time uh, taking part in an international workshop. Uh, I was really grateful to be a part of it, uh, but it uh, was more, more like a script uh, writing class. And the Produire au Sud, you didn't experience it as a, as a script writing class. How would you describe it to somebody who hasn't been? Uh, well, I think it's some, it's a workshop that help you to uh, polish the way that you, you present your project, your idea to, to people. Uh, and uh, that give you a certain skill that you are able to do it nicely to have your first foot in the door. Okay, but what, what words would you use to describe Produire au and why? Uh, the first one is valuable. Um, I would have to say the experience to uh, participate in the workshop was really, really uh, very good. It's, it's such a great experience that you, you take part and it was intense and, but in the end, you want more. <laughs> yeah, you just like, you know, it's hard after, after the school that you still can get to learn things in this, part, in, in this business. It's very hard that someone would want to teach you something and then you can learn something. And in that five days of the intense class, the experience is just amazing. So uh, the second word is uh, fruitful. Uh, the networking, uh, the camaraderie, that when you take part in the workshop, you get to know people. Like my story, I had someone uh, from the same year that helped me to produce my film. So uh, that is fruitful. Um, the third word, I'm, it is uh, constructive. Uh, it's in the process that you pick up, that, that, that is, you know, constructive is that the, the, the workshop help you in the process to build up your own script and skills to make them stronger. Uh, it was a big push in the development stage of the film. Well, that's a beautiful summation of Produire au Sud. It's lovely. It was a great memory. Mm. A great memory. I wish I can do it again. Mm.